Straightallday.com. Yeah. Straightallday.com. Making this video, I mean, I've actually said this before, but I know you YouTube viewers like when something's brand new, brand new version of the same content. But this is about uh, high school basketball players or those of you who have high school level experience and you're thinking about or you want to or you're trying to go play overseas foregoing a college basketball opportunity. The reason why I'm talking about this right now in this video is because I recently got an email from a gentleman who said he was checking out some information for his son. And his son was, a, he just mentioned in passing, he was asking me something about basketball agents, but he mentioned in passing that his son was a good high school player and they were exploring, he and his son together were exploring his options for his basketball future. And he was asking about agents because they were looking at opportunities to play overseas. And I responded to whatever he was asking about agents, but I also added in what I'm gonna tell you here in this video, which was that he as the father needs to uh, talk to his son about playing college basketball, going to college and playing college basketball for four years, one year, four years, whatever. The reason why, because I don't know this young man, I don't know the man who asked the question either. I don't know how good his son is or is not. But one thing I do know is that they were exploring reasons, they were exploring ways to go play overseas. So one thing that I do know for sure is that his son is not, one thing I know for sure, I was recording this on my phone, somebody called me, but anyway, his son ain't LaMelo, he ain't LeBron, because if he was, then he wouldn't need to go look up agents because the agents would be coming to him. So I know that this kid is not you know, that spectacular that he's got the opportunities at his feet. And that does not mean he's not good enough to play overseas. It doesn't mean he's not a good player. It means you're not that amazing that the opportunities are just coming to you, which means, and this is what I say as a general rule to any high school basketball player, that means you need to take your ass to college and play college basketball. Probably four years of college basketball so you can, first of all, develop as a basketball player. You can develop your body and get stronger. You can get better. In four years, you're going to get a whole lot better at basketball. You'll learn how to play within a system. This is another thing. But high school basketball and college basketball are very different depending on where you come from in high school. High schools are, there's so many of them, they can be very different. There's a lot of variants. But you're talking about high school to professional basketball? especially overseas basketball and most of these players who are most of you who are coming out of high school talking about going overseas you've never even seen an overseas basketball game you talking about you want to go play overseas or parents those of you who are parents looking for overseas options for your kid and you never even watched the overseas basketball game understand something about overseas and i'll get i'll come back to the college thing in a minute high school is the last place in your basketball journey if you're going to become a pro where talent alone will get you on the court. In college, talent alone will not get you on the court because everybody's talented. Everybody has skill. Everybody did something in high school to be on that college team, at least if you're on at a scholarship level. And the pros, everybody is damn sure guaranteed talented. Everybody's big, strong, fast, can run, jump, shoot, all of that in pros. Everybody got some amazing talent. That's how they became a pro. So talent alone, high school is the last place where that is the, that's all you need. If you just got talent, you'll be good. Everywhere else, you better have something else. The reason why college basketball is good for a player who wants to play overseas is that in college, you learn how to play within a system. You learn how to play within structure. And yeah, I get the whole thing about players not getting paid and all of that. That's not what this is about. This is about you actually being good once you get overseas. If you get overseas and you're not good, or you get over there and you all of a sudden realize, oh shit, I can't play in these systems. I can't fit in these structures. I can't do what this team needs me to do. It's not like high school where they just give me the ball and I can do whatever I want and I can just play off my talent because overseas is nothing like that. If you get there and then you realize that and that's the first time you're figuring that out, all right, you're done. Now you got to go get a job at, at UPS. And you can't go back and you can go back to college, but you can't play in college. And you ain't got a scholarship, so now you got to pay for it on a UPS salary. How are you going to do that? and you don't have a degree to get a, a better possible job, what you gonna do? What skills do you have? The only thing you did all your life was play basketball. So you gotta put all of these, you gotta factor all of this in when you're making this decision, oh, I'm gonna play overseas. Playing overseas from a high school level to going overseas, if that's the last place you played was high school, now you wanna play overseas. Understand that, I just lost my train of thought what I was gonna say here, but let me go back to the other thing and I'll come back to that. 
College basketball allows you to play in structure. You learn how to play in a system. You learn how to respect the authority of that coach who can, who basically runs the show. The coach decides who gets in the game, who doesn't. Playing time, practices, you got to go to school, go to classes, of course, stay eligible. Then you got practices and all that. And the coach is 100% in charge. So you mess up in college on under scholarship, and then you got to transfer. You might have to sit out a year. You still got to do your schoolwork to stay eligible. You got to sit on the bench. You got to practice every day, then sit on the bench and watch the those other players play and stay eligible then you finally get a chance to play in college the coach is the boss the coach runs things and if you don't like it then you're gonna have to you're gonna lose a year most of the time of eligibility not a year of eligibility but a year of time and basketball careers are short we notice before you can even get on the court and play again and guess what in overseas basketball the coach is the boss again the coach runs things there are players who i know players i know personally who i speak to on a regular basis who are talented enough to be starting and playing 35 minutes a game overseas. And overseas games are 40 minutes, by the way. They don't play. I'll go look at their box scores for games. They might play 15 minutes in a game and do good in their 15 minutes, but that's all the coach wanted them for that game was 15 minutes. Another game, you might play 25. Another game, you might play 30. Next game, you might play five minutes. That's how it is overseas. And I'm talking dudes who play D1 basketball, all conference D1 players, Go to an overseas team, they might only play 15 minutes in a, a big game, like a serious game for their team. That's the way that it is. The coach is the boss. And if you don't like it, now you can leave. But now you got to go find another team that already has a system and structure in place and the coach doesn't know you as well. And it, it could be a whole sloppy situation. The reason why college is good for a player who's going to play overseas is that you learn how to fit into the structure when you don't you can't just call your own shot. In high school, a talented enough player could call their own shot. You don't like this team, transfer to another school. You don't like that team, transfer to another school. You don't like this AAU coach, get on a different AAU team. That's the, and in the NBA, y'all high school players, that's most of the basketball y'all watch, right? You see these players now like this, they are, right, let's go find another team. All right, let's go tr go play for this team. All right, let's, I don't want to play for them no more, I'm going to play for them. They don't work like that overseas. It's not musical chairs. College basketball, and overseas basketball are not musical chairs. High school and the NBA, the NBA appears to be musical chairs for the superstars. But understand the rank and file players, which is 95% of the players in the league, they can't just go wherever they want, whenever they feel like it. They got to fit in the structure. The problem with the biggest thing with this whole this whole conversation about going from high school to college, overseas, NBA, wherever you want to go, is that every player thinks they're the exception. Every player thinks that they're talented enough to take everything that I'm saying and supersede it because you're just so good that it'll just work in your favor because, yeah, Dre, I get it, but I ain't a rank and file player. I'm not the average player, Dre. I'm not 99% of high school players who need to play in college. I'm good enough to play in the pros right now. I played against dudes who play overseas in the summer league, and I had 20 on this dude, and I played in this pro-am, and dudes who play in the league was like, yo, you good enough to play in the league right now. You better than this dude, and I get it. Everybody thinks they're the exception to the rule. And I'm not here to tell you that you're not. I'm not here to convince you that you're not the exception to the rule. Everybody thinks they are. So if you believe that, listen, go ahead and believe it. Confidence is a really important thing in sports. As the, as the saying goes, 90% 90, 90 of sports is from the neck up, right? And it's true. You need that confidence. But I want you to understand that you also need to be humble enough. And that's a word that I don't use too often. You need to be humble enough to look at yourself objectively and ask yourself, okay, Am I ready to step into this thing? Go watch some overseas games. Watch the whole game. Watch the superstar players that you, whose names you know from playing D1 college or dudes you know who might play overseas and to let them tell you honestly what it's like. It ain't all just about talent overseas. Overseas, you got to be able to fit into a system, a structure. It ain't no, you know how James Harden plays in the league? All right, ain't no overseas team playing like that. At least no team, no team that's playing in a league that with guys who can play. No team plays like that, where you just clear out and you just do your one-on-one -on -one thing all game. They just give you the ball 10 times in a row. Never, ever. <laughs> Don't work like that overseas. All right, maybe in some bullshit league, but not in the serious leagues. No serious league in no country do they play like that. So if you think just your talent alone is enough, it's not. You got to know how to fit into a system, how to play when you're not getting the ball all the time, when you're not even playing sometimes, when you can't even speak the same language as your coach when you can't complain to nobody because nobody wants to hear that shit, you got to know how to do that. You got to be able to do that. You must be able to adapt and adjust because if you don't, they'll get rid of you. And if your reputation becomes that you're that person who has talent, but you can't fit in the structure, all right, your career will be over. Then what you going to do? You didn't go to college. You ain't got no skills. All you did was play ball your whole life. What you going to do?
These are the things that you need to think about and understand if you make the wrong decision, you won't be able to go back, especially when we're talking overseas. Once you sign a contract, you're done. Your eligibility is over for college. So I suggest most of you go to college, go to college for four years, go to school, go to class. Yes, let the NCAA exploit you. Now, if you ain't a brand name player, you're not really being exploited because the money's not being made off of you. It's only being made off the big name guys, by the way. So uh, every college player be saying, well, they're exploiting us. Well, now, how much is the school actually making off of you personally? All right, it's probably less than what you're getting for a tuition room and board, honestly, if we want to keep it real. That's a different conversation for a different day. But I want to make sure I say that. Go to, go to school, develop skills, develop your people skills, learn how to build relationships, learn how to deal with people who are not from your background, people who are not like you, people who don't think like you, people who look different from you. These are things you learn in class in college. These are things that you learn every day you know, walking around campus in college. These are things, skills that you need to develop because you'll need them in your life. Even if everything goes perfect, your overseas career will be over. You're going to be 35 or 38 or 40 or 27. If you're the average professional basketball player, you're going to be like 26. Your career is over. What are you going to do? You got another 50 years to live. What skills do you have? What do you bring to the table of life that makes you valuable that will make somebody pay you money? If all you did was play ball, you're going to become a trainer or a coach. You're going to become the, the 20,000th basketball trainer on Instagram. You're going to become the 50,000th coach. I mean, you can. I mean, listen, I know some people, good friends of mine who are trainers and coaches. They're actually good at it, though. Right, do you want to do anything other than train or coach basketball for the rest of your life? Or right, then you better develop some other skills. All right, I think I said enough on the subject. Work on your game. Dre all day. Oh, yeah. My book, The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. All right, for whenever you go overseas, whether it's going to be after college, whether you want to do it now and take everything I said and say, fuck that, Dre. I won't go overseas anyway. I got a book called The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. That is the blueprint guidebook. It's a reference book. It's not a story. It's a reference book of me explaining to you the things that you need to do if you want to play professional basketball overseas right now from whatever level you're coming from. I came from a D3 and went overseas, played overseas for nine years. So if you're from that situation or something similar, that book is for you. You can get that by going to balloverseas.com. That's balloverseas.com. Work on your game. Dre all. Hey, this is Dre all day. If you enjoy this mental game stuff that I talk about on video every day, then I put together a simple master class that will give you one key tip for developing what I call the bulletproof mindset. All you need to do is go to workonmygame.com slash bulletproof. There's the link right here and it's down below in the video description. Just click on it, It'll take you right to the page. I'm gonna give you that video. It's about 20 minutes long. This master class I put together one key tip for developing a bulletproof mindset and when you get that special masterclass free video, I'm also going to make you a special offer to get the full Bulletproof Mindset experience. So just go to that link that you see right here, and I'm going to show you how to develop that Bulletproof Mindset right now. So if you like this video that you just watched, I'm going to show you how to take it to the highest possible level. You ready for that? Let's do it.